Hi, uh, my name is Nicholas Lofgren. I work for the Social Insurance Agency in Sweden, and I work there as a spokesperson for family economics. I would like to start to thank uh, the Korean Institute for Healthy Family for letting me come here today and, and speak in these matters and uh, also uh, explain how our economic family policy in Sweden works in general and what adjustments that we have done due to the COVID-19 situation in the country. Uh, I will uh, start by showing you the system in general, how the the family policy is uh, designed in Sweden today. It's a policy that has been developed during 100 years or so slowly uh, towards the system that we see today. But in general, I will say the policy goals today is to, it should be possible for both parents to combine working life with family life, to both have a job and a family at the same time, and no one should have to choose whether to do one or the other. The system should also redistribute money from families without children to families with children. And this is since we know that it costs more to have children and not to have children. And of course, society needs children to, to exist. So therefore, this is a positive redistribution uh you know in two families with children the system is developed also so it should give support in vulnerable situations and by that we mean like if you have a disabled child or so a child due to disability that needs more attention has extra costs and so on and due to the severeness of the illness or not the illness the disability you can diff get a different kind of support and also if you have a bad economy economic situation you can also get some support from the, this policy therefore it, it it has developed and the policy content today is to designed to match these goals and try to, uh, to achieve these goals and one important part is the school system and uh, the schools they well uh, it contains of three different parts with preschools the schools and also after school services and of course the preschools are very important if um, if you're supposed to have a job and and children at the same time you need some daycare for the child and uh, that therefore you have uh, the right for to daycare uh, from the child is about one and a half years old until the child is starts at school at six years old and it should not be only for the rich or so that should be uh, able to afford to have their children in the preschools and uh, daycares therefore it's highly subsidized in sweden's so parents pay about 10 percent of the actual costs to, to have children in in preschools then they go to schools uh, no school fee or so from the six six years of age until they're 16 and during the first years you also have these after school services that is also highly subsidized but it, the idea is that if your job stops at maybe five o'clock or six o'clock but the school stops at two uh, then you have these after school services that helps you taking care of the child until you stop working and can go and get your child at the after school services uh, another major big part of the system of the policy is the parental insurance and uh, that is a social insurance that um, well if you live or work in Sweden you are insured in some way with this insurance and it's financed through employers fees so uh, employers um, on top of every gross salary they pay a certain uh, social insurance fee and in total that is thir about 31 percent extra on top of every gross salary but in order to finance the parental insurance 2.6 percentages of these 31 are dis uh, are uh, designed to pay for the parental insurances so it only costs 2.6 percentages of those 31 and it's the employers that pay into this system I, I must say also that uh, in Sweden today, employers pay extra actually uh, on top of this and have uh, often private agreements uh, with, with um, uh, the people who work for them. So they get extra money uh, on top of this, what the parental insurance uh, can pay out. 
we also have different benefits for for families and these are financed through the tax system uh, and and the state budget so to speak uh, what we have seen uh, as an outcome that is uh, often associated as a policy outcome is that we have high labor force participation in Sweden. Uh, most people uh, in working ages, they work in Sweden, no matter if they're men or women. Uh, so we have high labor force participation in general, but uh, over, I would say about 80% in average uh, among men and women attend the labor force. And, very low gender gap. So uh, the norm is that uh, everyone should work if they can and are able to, they should work. And that goes for both men and women. We also have high fertility rates in Sweden. I would say it's about 1.9 uh, children being born uh, per woman in Sweden today. And the uh, fertility rates uh, and the number of children being born has increased every year for the last 20 years or so. So it's a positive um, development when it comes to fertility rates. And I, I would say these outcomes that we see, uh, they're often associated with systems that are uh, kind of generous and also that um, aims at gender equality. Uh, so, so this is uh, how we have designed the family policy system in general, I would say. I will also show you now in detail also how, how the system works, uh, and it will be a challenge to do so within this short period of time. But the parental insurance that I spoke about uh, consists of three parts, uh, pregnancy benefit, parental benefit, and temporary parental benefit. And the first one is to, to secure the mother when the mother is pregnant for the last uh, two months. Uh, if you have risks in the working environment, risks for the child to be or for the mother, then you can uh, apply to us for this benefit and we will look into it. And uh, you can uh, possibly be home for the last two months with 80% of your salary in order not to risk uh, the pregnancy or uh, the health of both the child or the mother. About 25% of all women uh, gets pregnancy benefit in Sweden. The parental benefit is that that is that insurance I talked about when when um, uh, a child is born and uh, you can use this benefit until the child turns 12 years old. Uh, but most parents use the parental benefit uh, for the first two years when the child is small until they put their child in daycare and, and go to work, so to speak. So that is mostly used for the first two years. And in Sweden, you get 480 days with parental benefit per child. Uh, 390 of those 480 are paid out at 80% of your salary. And 90 days are paid out at... Uh, flat rate level. It's kind of low, I would say, but the flat rate level for the last 90 days. And the idea from the start with the parental benefit from when we introduced it in 1974 is that half of the days are intended for each parent. So half of the days for the mother, half of the days to the father. And if you don't want to share like this, you want to share otherwise, of course, you can sign an agreement and um, uh, say, hey, I don't want to use my days and assign it off to the mother. Uh, that is mostly the case anyway. And um, from the start, I would say most fathers did that and they uh, signed over uh, most of their uh, days to the mothers. Uh, so the system, the idea of the system didn't really work for the first 20 years or so, I would say, because after 20 years with parental benefit, we only had a, like a 90-10 split. So most uh, mothers used the, the insurance still and not the fathers. But then we introduced the reserved months, uh, first in 1995, then 2002, and then 2016. Uh, where it's kind of use or lose days. Uh, so first it was like 30 days, use them or lose them. Otherwise the state will take them back. And we saw that 
these kind of reserved months had an immediate effect to uh, give gender equality a kick in the butt, so to speak, and uh, speed up the pace towards a more equal usage of parental benefit. So today it's a little bit more equal anyway, but it's like a 70-30 split, I would say, after 45 years with parental benefits. It goes kind of slow, uh, but still it goes every year towards a more equal usage of parental benefit. Fathers today, they use about 110 days in average with parental benefits. So, and, and most parents use it. It's kind of a norm today that uh, every father uses some parental benefit. And because uh, if you don't, you you will be a very strange parent. People would say if if you if you don't use it. So almost every father, I would say, uses some parental benefit anyway. Uh, we have also this temporary parental benefit, and that is if a child gets sick, you have to leave from work to take care of your child. Maybe they call from the daycare center or so. Uh, can you come and pick up your child because it's, uh, the child is sick? They can uh, leave your job and, and do so. And the employer cannot say no uh, because you're entitled to, by law to do so. And you will also get 80% of your salary uh, to, in order to take care of your child. And it's the uh, parents themselves uh, who decides if the child is sick or not. And they do so for the first seven days of the sickness. After seven days, you have to have a doctor's certificate uh, showing that the child is sick or so. So these are the three parts, I would say, about the parental insurance in the, in the parental insurance system. Among the benefits, we have child allowance, that is a general allowance that you get just for having a child. And it's about 120 euros uh, per month per child until the child is 16 years old. And this uh, child allowance was introduced in Sweden in 1948. So it's a old allowance uh, that uh, aimed from the beginning to reduce uh, poverty among uh, families with children and also to to um, uh, increase fertility rates i would say they, that was a, one of the ideas anyway from 1948 and we have housing allowance uh, also an old allowance from 1937 and it's a means tested allowance if you have a family with children and live under narrow li living conditions, maybe you have a bad economy and so on, you can apply for this uh, to the social insurance agency and you get different amount of money depending on how many children you have, how high is your rent, how big is your house or, or your or your flat and what's your income. And depending on those variables, you get different amount of money from, from us then. Maintenance support, that is for separated parents. If uh, the parent who doesn't live with the child fails to pay maintenance uh, to the other parent who lives with the child. Maybe the parent refuses to pay or, or maybe they can't pay because they have a too bad economy or, or so. Uh, then we at the social insurance agency, we pay out the support in advance, often to the mother than with, with children so that the children shouldn't suffer in this situation. And then we claim it from the other parent afterwards instead. So, so this is how this uh, system works with maintenance support. We also have child care allowance, and that is if you have a disabled child, uh, then uh, you can get different amount of money, depends on the severeness of the disability, and also if the, how much extra attention and extra cost you have for the child, you can apply for this to us and you get different amount of money depending on those variables there. Uh, I would say also when it comes to parental benefit um, and the uh, equal usage of the insurance that we at, at the social insurance agency also, we have a mission also from the government to work for uh, that the parental benefit should be used in a more equal way. And we have done so since 1974, I would say, with different commercials and so on, showing that it's uh, normal and positive to share the parental benefit. Also, I would say today among companies in Sweden, 
uh, they kind of compete in some way to show that they are a family friendly company, that it, here it's a very good environment for families to work and so on. They have these agreements where they chop off the the payments, but uh, they also do different things, I would say, in the in the in the working place today, trying to attract uh, parents as a labor force, I would say. So, uh, yeah, uh, that is how they also uh, work with these uh, matters. Uh, what kind of adjustments have we done then due to COVID-19? Well, in these matters, I would say that uh, one of the things that we have done is um, within the temporary parental benefit, we removed in March, we removed uh, the demand for a doctor certificate from day seven. That was one thing that we removed because we didn't want uh, children into the hospitals uh, where the virus is spreading and so on. So therefore it's a temporal uh, removal of this. So it will come back in again, but um, for now it's gone. Um, we also uh, have a new um, compensation and that is uh, uh, an insurance uh, for parents when they're, if the schools or preschools are closed uh, due to COVID-19 because we haven't closed all schools or so here. Uh, but um, if they are closed due to uh, virus infection in the school, uh, then you can get uh, also uh, payment from this insurance uh, due to that um, cause, so to speak. Uh, we also removed um, the temper uh, removal of the deduction from sick pay. If you're sick in Sweden, it works like this, that the, the company pays for the first 14 days. But in the beginning, also, you have like a, uh, a deduction from sick pay that is kind of, uh, well, in the in the start, so to speak. But that is that is removed now. Uh, so you shouldn't hesitate to, to call in sick if you're sick during the pandemic, so to speak, uh, for economic reasons, so to speak. We also have a compensation for the cost of sick pay that is higher uh, than normal in companies. If you have a company and, uh, and the cost for sick pay is much higher than it used to be, then the government uh, comes in and pays uh, some of this extra cost that you have for, for sick leave. So that is some of the, the adjustments we have done. I would also say that we, in Sweden today, we work from home uh, in a large extent, I would say. All those who can work from home. So uh, this recording that you see now, it's um, actually from my kitchen at home. Uh, I work uh, from home about uh, four days a week and, and I go into work maybe one day a week and have all the meetings and so on, uh, like this one, uh, digital uh, through Skype or Zoom or so. Uh, so that is the case now. Everyone who can works from home. So it's a different environment now and different uh, challenges for the future, I would say. Well, this was all for me from Sweden. So I will once again want to thank you for letting me come here to speak and say bye-bye uh, from uh, Stockholm, Sweden and the Social Insurance Agency.